Hi everyone and welcome to those who've just joined us. Thank you for joining our safety on campus session. This session is going to be presented by Rachel Curry, our Deputy Principal for the Manchester College. Throughout the session, please feel free to use the Q&A box to the right of the screen and ask any questions you may have. We'll do our best to answer them all at the end of the session. Now I'd like to introduce you to Rachel. Hi Rachel, over to you. Hi Amy, thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Manchester College. As Amy said, I'm Rachel Curry and I'm Deputy Principal at the College, and I'm here this evening to welcome you and to let you know the steps we've put in place to keep you safe during the current coronavirus pandemic. Before we get into what you need to know and what to expect in September, I'd like to share a little bit about us. We've been working really hard at the college over the last few years to ensure that our students get a really high quality experience. And by the time they leave us, they haven't just completed a course, they're ready to start a career. So I wanted to share a few of the things that make us different and what that means for our students. So they are absolutely career ready when they leave us at the end of their course. Firstly, our results are excellent. Not only are we the number one college in Greater Manchester for achievement, we are also the number one college in the country for functional English and maths. This means that more of our students than any other college in Greater Manchester get their technical qualification and more of our students than in any other college in the country achieve their functional English and maths. But as I said, it's not just about the qualifications for us. When you join our college, you will either join one of our centres of excellence, where you will have a two week work placement with an employer and lots of industry speakers. Or if you've already got some experience of the world of work, you can apply to our Industry Excellence Academy, where the programmes are co-designed and co-delivered and branded by one of our employer partners. Our Industry Excellence Academy courses have at least 315 hours of industry experience built into them. So by the time you leave us, you know a lot about your chosen industry and even more importantly, some excellent employers know about you. But wherever our students start their journey with us, the benefits are really clear. More of our learners successfully achieve their course including English and maths, and our employers tell us that nine out of 10 of our students are ready for the workplace. The first thing to say is obviously that life has been really different for everybody in year 11 this year. And that means that some of the things that would normally have happened at this time of year, like your final term of learning, exams, the usual end of term celebrations and proms and taster events at college won't have taken place in the same way. However, what does remain the same is that you should still be thinking about what's next and what it would be like to start college in September. So whilst it won't be as easy to drop in and see us on campus, we're still here to support you and to provide you with the answers you need. And hopefully these sessions will help introduce us to you. In this session tonight, I want to cover what changes we've put in place to keep you safe, what the college will look like in September and to answer any questions that you may have. These changes are not only to the buildings, but also about how we will all act when we're on campus. So we've been working really hard to ensure that the start of your course is as safe as possible. We know that some of you may be anxious or whilst you're not worried, some of your parents or carers may be concerned. Some of you may have really enjoyed a longer period at home. Others may be looking forward to getting out more. Our job is to get the balance just right so that you are safe on campus, but you also have a great experience with us. Starting college is a new chapter in your life and should be something that you're really looking forward to. So whilst the sites will look and feel a bit different, our welcome will still be really warm. To do this, we've made some changes to the way we will be working next year. This means that some of your timetable will look different to that that we ran in previous years. You'll have a mixture of face-to-face -face and online learning. We'll be sending you your timetable 
so that you can see which classes will be taught on campus and those that you will access from home. But please don't worry, since lockdown we've delivered remote teaching to over 10,000 students with really high levels of engagement and interaction. Some of this will be independent study, but you will also have lessons that are delivered remotely, but live in a timetable slot for you to access from home, just as we're doing here now. We've completed robust risk assessments for everything that you will do on site and for each part of your course. We've even had every site deep cleaned. So before you join us, there are lots of other ways to find out about starting college. Follow us on social media to keep up to date with all our announcements. And at the end of August, we'll be emailing all applicants with details of how to complete your enrolment with us. So if you haven't already made an application, it's really important that you do so you can receive all of that update. A personal joining pack will be available online before you start, giving you all the details on what you can expect from us including your timetable and what sites will look like and what you will need to do before you start. We really can't wait for September. We can't wait to see you all, but I know you'll maybe be thinking about some of the practical things you need to do to get back into college. Travel is much easier because of our pass and that means that travel is free on buses for all 16 to 18 year olds in Greater Manchester as long as you apply for an R pass. You might have heard that social distancing is in place on public transport and that will mean that fewer people can travel on each bus or tram. So we're going to plan your timetable to try and avoid peak time travel for you. And you could also maybe consider other ways to travel to college, walking or cycling, for example. And you may have spotted that cycle lanes have been set up across Manchester. But please remember that you have to wear a face covering on public transport or you may not be allowed to travel on the bus or tram without one. So what will it feel like on site? Firstly, because we will have lots of control measures in place, including two metre social distancing, you do not need to wear a mask on campus. Hand sanitizers and hand washing will be widely available and we'll make sure that you have your own equipment or we clean it really regularly between use. We do ask that you wear your ID card at all times. You will need it to get onto our sites, but you will need to keep it on. And our team will remind you of this constantly. This makes sure that we can keep you safe and we know that you are a student. Our teams will be available to you on site and also remotely to support you. There'll be lots of signs with important information and one way systems. Social distancing is new to all of us, but we'll be there to support you. It will still feel like college. It will still feel different to school and we will still make sure you get to know each other on your course. If you need any equipment to help you to learn at home, just let our teams know and we can support you to remove any barriers. Our refectories and Starbucks sites will still be open and we'll also provide you with different food options so you can grab and go. And most importantly, if you don't feel well, then we will have a team to support you and help you follow the government guidance. Your classrooms and learning spaces will be marked to follow social distancing guidelines. It will feel different to what, to what you really remember a school classroom to be before lockdown, but it will create smaller groups with the advantages of more time for the teacher to spend with you in class. We will though need your help and support to follow these new guidelines and we'll set them out really clearly so you know what, you, what we need from you. Um, but don't worry, we'll keep all of this under review and we'll get your feedback about, about what you like or what you don't like. It's really important to us that you feel safe, but we also want you to enjoy your time at college. So we're all here through the next few weeks to answer all of your questions and to make your journey from couch to college as easy as possible. So if you're starting your career at one of our centres of excellence or in our Industry Excellence Academy, we really look forward to seeing you soon. So I think that's probably all from me, Amy. I think it's probably time now if you want to ask me some questions.
Yeah, that's great, Rachel. Thank you so much for that presentation. That was really, really informative and I'm sure everyone got a lot out of that and put a lot of minds at rest. Um, so we've got um, quite a few questions which have come in during the session. So um, the first question is, will, my, will I need to have my temperature checked on campus? Thank you. It's a really good question. And I know that some schools and other employers have been doing that. We're not planning to do that when you enter college campuses. OK, that's great. Um, I've got another question here. How will um, how will be, I be on campus? How often, sorry, will I be on campus compared to being taught at home? That's really going to depend on the course that you're undertaking. And what we're doing is giving you a commitment to a number of hours that you will do on site and a number of hours that you will do remotely. You will get your timetable. It will be really clear on the proportions and it will also enable us to maybe flex that. So you might start with a certain proportion at the start of the year and that might increase throughout the year. So we're really going to be mindful of the current government guidelines and we will adjust that. But your timetable will give you a really clear understanding of the face to face contact you'll get and the amount that will be available online but it will depend on the course that you're doing. So I can't give you a, an average. You'll get your timetable and you'll be able to see it really clearly. That's great. Thank you, Rachel. Um, somebody's asked, will there still be um, parking on campus? There will. Car parking will be available as it was before on all our sites. Lovely. That's great. Um, and somebody else has asked, will, will, what will happen if someone in my class tests positive for coronavirus? So we're going to follow the track and trace um, system that the government has put in place. And because we're introducing a slightly wider social distancing than it would normally be expected, the two metres, you should be keeping two metres apart from those, those students who are with you in the class. And that means that your exposure to anybody who is infected is really limited because you're operating outside of those government guidelines to keep you and your, and your fellow students Student safe. So what will happen is that that student, if they are test, if they do test positive, we will follow the track and trace system that the government is going to put in place and they will then contact the people who need to potentially isolate as a result of that contact. But because we're sticking to the two metres, uh, that should be OK for you because you've kept your distance from those other people within your classroom. That's great, thank you. And um, also another one here says, my son is currently shielding. Will he be able to come onto campus in September? We understand, although we've not seen it, that the government advice is going to change shortly with regard to people who are shielded, whether they be clinically vulnerable or extremely clinically vulnerable. What we would do is to make sure that your son had an individual risk assessment and if they do want to come on site, that would be great. And we'll make sure that they have a, a risk assessment for their activity on site. And as I said, because we're keeping the two metre social distancing away from other students, we should be able to put in plan a plan in place to accommodate that. But you need to raise it with us and we'll make sure that that risk assessment is in place. If you're not comfortable with them coming onto campus, then we can look to increase the amount of remote support that's provided for, you, for your son. So please don't worry about it. There's, there's a place here for everybody, whether you're shielded or not, whether you're anxious or not, we'll make sure that we've got the steps in place to keep you safe. That's great, Rachel. And will, um, who would they contact in terms of, you know, if, if they're feeling worried, would they contact the admin team? They would. Um, if you're worried before, there are a number of telephone numbers that you can contact before you enrol with us and those are all on our website, including the careers advice and welfare team. So I'm sure that they can be easily accessible to you by referring to the website. So please raise those questions then. You'll also have lots of opportunity to raise it throughout the enrolment process. So please don't hesitate to let us know unless we know we can't help you. So please let us know. Great advice. Thank you. Um, Somebody else has said, what if I don't feel safe to start in September? Can they study virtually? 
as I said before, oh, well, I'm hoping first that you will feel safe. I think we, we've gone a step beyond in introducing some really yeah. thorough measures on site to keep to keep everybody safe. Um, but if you come to site and you feel uncomfortable, you must let us know because we need to do something about that. College is a place where you should feel comfortable. You shouldn't feel anxious and, and you should be enjoying your experience at, at college. So if you come to site and you don't feel comfortable, you must let us know and then we will see whether we can support you either to make you feel more safe on site or whether we can put in a risk assessment to protect you in other ways or we can move your learning to a much more remote teaching and learning. We really hope that you come to site. We really hope that you come on site and you enjoy the experience of interaction, interacting with other students, albeit at two metre social distance. Um, but we want you to we want you to enjoy college. We want you to come. But if you are anxious, please let us know. That's great. Thank you. There's um, there's another parent who said that, you know, a daughter suffers from anxiety and worried about starting in September um, and asking who she can speak to. But you've, you've covered all of that. So I hope that answers um, your question. Um, I think there will be just to kind of a comeback on that, I suppose there are there will be many people who are anxious about a, a return. Yeah. And whether it's a return to work or a return to school or a return to college. Um, so that's nothing to be to kind of surprised about or concerned about. It will be perfectly normal for many, many people. So we need to make sure you feel comfortable. Um, so please, if your daughter is anxious, just let us know and we can talk you through the steps and we can make sure you have either support put in place, an individual risk assessment, um, or you can just chat it through and, and, and just talk. We, I've given you a bit of an indication of what the measures are that we've put in place, but we can also have a really detailed conversation about it just to put your mind at rest. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, somebody else has said my course has work experience. Um, what will I do that in the current situation? As yet, we haven't had the formal confirmation from the government that work experience placements can begin. And to some extent, some of those will depend on what that working experience entails. So some employers will be really open to having people back on their site and they will have done a thorough risk assessment that we will check to make sure that it's safe. But other employers may not be as comfortable in that arrangement. So it will really be on an employer by employer basis. Um, but we understand just how important it is to get you your work experience um, placements. And we're also working with lots of employers at the moment to do some of that remotely. So in the absence of actually being able to do that with an employer, we can um, arrange for those placements to be undertaken remotely. And our employers are actually working with a number of students now at home. So just as many of the nation have been working at home, some students have been working at home, but with an employer. So we'll look at lots of different ways in order to get you the experience that you need so that you're not disadvantaged. That's lovely, thank you. Um, somebody else has said um, they're due to study hospitality and catering. Um, they know that obviously there's the two metre um, distance sort of in place in the classrooms, but will there be any other special measures for this course? Um, it's the same with any other course. We'll make sure that there is a really robust hygiene plan in place with hand washing and um, the use of hand sanitizer. We'll also be looking at avoiding sharing equipment. So the, the tools that would you would usually use in a, a kitchen environment, we'll look to make sure that you either have your own set or there's a robust cleaning regime that's in place in between those. And um, it will be slightly different, but there's no reason why we can't undertake some of the same things that you did previously we're just making sure that we've done a risk assessment on everything that you do on site and that it's been checked so that all those things that you would normally do as part of your course we can do just with extra control measures around them lovely thank you um, and i know you touched on sort of college facilities earlier on and um, somebody said you know will will all of them be open i know you mentioned starbucks would be open and they'd sort of grab food um grab and go food and um, will any of the facilities remain closed at all we'll be following the government advice on those areas that are remain 
remaining clo closed currently. So for example, gyms are currently closed. So those will continue to be closed until the government says that we're OK to open the college gym. And that's similar for hair and beauty salons. At the moment, the hair salons have been reopened, but beauty hasn't. Um, so there'll be some that we need to wait until the government advice is clear that we can reopen them. And then we've done the full risk assessment around them. But other than that, the facilities will be open. Great stuff. Um, so do I have to come to campus to enrol? Somebody's asking. It's going to be a really mixed position on enrolment, so we'll make sure that we've got something in place that's right for you. There'll be a combination of, of completely virtual online enrolment. There'll be a, a process whereby you can talk to somebody remotely and undertake the enrolment with them. Um, so a little bit like we're doing now, someone will talk you through the process and fill in the forms with you. And then there'll be some opportunity for people to come to site to enrol. By an appointment basis, you'll be able to come to site as you would normally come in and enrol in exactly the same way. So we're looking at a, a kind of hybrid structure whereby we've got something for everybody. That's great. And also just to mention um, on that point about enrolment, we had um, um, an enrolment session today and there's also one planned for the week commencing the 20th of July. So and um, you can also watch the, the session back on our YouTube channel, uh, Manchester College YouTube channel, so you can access that as well. Any questions sort of on, on enrolment there? Um, somebody else has asked, when might we receive our timetables? The timetables are due to be issued as you enrol, so it will be after the enrolment process has been complete and then you will get your timetable. Lovely. Um, we've got a question here about the face mask, which I know you answered earlier about the face coverings that they won't need to wear them on on campus just as they come into campus if they're arriving by public transport. Yeah, and we will have some measures in place as you arrive so that if you are um, wearing a disposable face mask, then we will have some arrangements in place when you arrive for those to be either disposed of safely and for then to you to use the hand sanitizers that are available or for you to put them in a separate plastic bag and put them in your bag because we don't want those face masks being um, distributed around the college. So we'll have some arrangements in place whereby you come to site, you put it in your bag or you dispose of it safely. That's great, thank you. I've um, got another question here. Um, well, there's going to be asking specific about animal care actually. How will animal care be affected by this and will it be affected? I don't know the specifics of the animal care curriculum, um, but in exactly the same way as I've just described for the, the um, hospitality and catering provision, there'll be a risk assessment around it to make sure that you're safe in, in dealing with animals, the part of your course that involves that process. Then they'll put a risk assessment around it to make sure that you're safe in handling animals. But we don't want in any way to stop the practical things from happening because that's part of your course. So that the team who are in that department will put those measures and control in place to make sure that you can still do things that you would normally do as part of the course. There might just be different controls around them. But if you want to ask any specific questions about animal care, then just get in touch with us and I'm sure someone can ring you back just to talk it through in a bit more detail. Thank you. There's also um, an animal care session next Thursday um, at one o'clock, so they can always um, you can always book onto that session as well. Um, somebody has mentioned about gloves. Do I need gloves on site? I know we touched on uh, the face coverings. Will will they need gloves when they come on site? No, you won't need gloves when you come on site. Um, you will be able to have regular access to hand sanitizers and hand washing. So we will be reinforcing the constant message of the importance of washing your hands on a regular basis and in using all the hand sanitizers that will be available to you. As the government said, the really important thing is to wash your hands frequently and on a regular basis and we'll be really encouraging. It will be a little bit of a broken record, I think, in terms of wash your hands on a regular and frequent basis. I think everyone's quite used to doing that by now though, aren't they? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so uh, somebody has asked um, about a hairdressing course and I know that we've, we've touched on things, but things like the, you know, well, they need to bring their own equipment to, to um, on site, which quite possibly they might have to. 
they might have to do that. Um, where you need equipment for the course, then we will be looking to provide some of that for you. So our, our careers and welfare team will work through that process to make sure that those of you who, who are eligible for a, a kit can get a kit. But we're looking to make to make kits available so that you're not sharing them. And then you keep that kit and that will be then your responsibility. So we're not cross contaminating in sharing combs and scissors, etc. Great stuff. And um, somebody said, how will online live live classes work um, if they need support and guidance? We've been doing it really effectively since the start of lockdown. So as I said, we've had over 10,000 students who've been learning and being supported remotely. The online careers welfare team have been in full operation. So the levels of service that we have provided to our students hasn't changed, whether you're on site or whether you're remote. So we'll make sure that you've got the right numbers, the contact details for everybody that you need to speak to, but your tutor will also be there to support you. So whether that's remote, or whether that's face to face, you'll still have the same tutor and they will be available for you to ask any questions of them and to make sure that you've got the support or to refer you to the people who can support you. That's lovely. And we also um, we have sort of supported learning and we have um, the, the sessions taking place next week as well and additional supported learning. Um, somebody's asked, what might the social distancing be like at lunchtime? What we're going to do is to, yes, absolutely. We're going to stagger um, the timetabling. So we'll make sure that not everybody is on their lunch break at the same time. So firstly, we'll stagger the arrival times on site. We'll stagger breaks and we'll stagger lunches. Um, and in a similar way, we'll stagger the end of the day um, so that students aren't all arriving together and they're not all queuing for lunch at the same time because we wouldn't want that to happen. Um, we'll make sure that there's a number of different options. So we might have some um, grab and go bags that are available for you just to pick up and leave with, but we'll also have a, a similar menu so you can go and choose something. Um, it might look slightly different. There's likely to be some perspex screens between you and the, and the refectory colleagues, um, but they'll make you feel welcome and we'll still have an offer for you. And there'll be lots of different options to choose from to enable you to feel safe and to maintain your distance. That's great, thank you. Um, somebody has asked, will I be limited to the number of friends that I can spend time with when I'm not in class? What we're, what we're not going to do is to introduce a kind of bubble system that was in place um, in schools because in a bubble system in a college is really difficult to maintain because you might be in a different class for um, your vocational course that you might be for your English and maths courses. So we're going to maintain the two metre distancing and that means that you can mix with your friends outside of your class as long as you maintain the two metre social distancing. That's great, thank you. Um, I know we've, we've touched on this sort of online classes and that we've been delivering them. Somebody's asked about what about the practical practical classes, you know, considering the, the social distancing, things like engineering um, and, and other sort of practical classes. How, how will they work? They'll work in exactly the same way. So they'll all be subject to a risk assessment, um, but that those controls that will be put in place will make sure that you can still do those vocational elements of the course. And that's really, really important. So you might do some of the theory remotely, but the practical elements you might be in for. They might be in smaller groups so that we'll rotate learners in and out, but you'll still get the opportunity to do those vocational practical elements because that is a key part of your course. And if you haven't done those bits, that limits it's your ability to practice when you leave us. So we have to maintain that element of vocational offer within your course and that will be the case. They might be in smaller groups um, and you might have to, um, to, to rotate in and out a little bit and maintain your social distance, but the, that offer will still be there. That's great, thank you. Um, there's been a couple of people asking about, um, you know, the sports part of their public services course, you know, how will that be affected? Also, somebody has asked, you know, they've accepted a place on a football scholarship, sport and physical activity. Um, do we know how the physical sort of sports activities will be affected by the COVID guidelines? Um, I know we've, we've sort of already talked about the obviously the social distancing and the practical elements of, of the how the classes will be run. 
Mm, I think that we will follow the advice that's available. So um, I know that the FA have issued some very specific advice about um, football and playing football and coaching of football. So we'll be following that advice. And as that changes, we'll change our offer to make sure that we reflect that current position. Um, but we'll be doing everything we can to make sure that you get some practical elements to that. So we won't be just uh, just doing the theory of football. We'll make sure that we've got the risk assessment to enable you to do some of that activity, albeit following either the government advice or the FA advice. That's great, thank you. Um, somebody has asked, will there not be any paired work? Will it be strictly individual work? You may be paired, but clearly as part of that pairing, you'll have to maintain some distance. Yeah. Um, somebody has asked, what will happen if I live with somebody who is shielding? So it depends on how comfortable you are in coming into college. Um, if you live with somebody who is shielding and you want to come to site and you feel comfortable about the arrangements that we are putting in place, then you can you'll be very free and welcome at, on college premises. If you want us to review and look at um, that reflects in the amount that you deliver, that you um, learn remotely versus the amount that you do face to face, then let us know because you might be more comfortable to, to increase the amount that you do at home and come into college less frequently. But given that we are maintaining that two metre social distance, that should be OK for you to come in because we're not exposing you or expecting you to come in close contact with anybody else. If, if a student wanted to wear a mask, could they could they wear a mask? We're not encouraging students or, or staff to wear a mask when they're on site um, because we don't think that's necessary. And in fact, the government is saying that it's not really appropriate for people to be wearing a mask on college or, or school premises. Um, and that's because we've already put those measures in place. So as long as those measures are in place and we've taken them a step beyond the government advice, you don't need to wear a mask on college premises. OK, that's great. Um, as, as people haven't had, somebody's asked, as we haven't had a welcome day, meaning that they're not familiar with the campus, what, what would their first day sort of look like on campus? I think it will depend very much on the course that you're doing and the site that you go to. What we're going to do, we're running all these sessions that you're very welcome to, to attend now. So you get to know us a little bit. You get to meet the, the, the colleagues, the students, the staff that you'll be working with. So you get to see us a little bit, but I know that that's not the same. Um, we'll be making sure that when you arrive on site for the first time, you, you get an induction in the same way that you know where things are, that you get to be familiar familiar with the site and that you know who your teacher is and who the who, what, where your class classes are and um, so that you do the same thing um, albeit it will it will be happening then rather than it would have normally happened at this time of year. That's lovely thank you um, and so, so somebody had also said that so will there they won't be any college interviews so um, because of because of the coronavirus so or will the interview still be taking place? Could they be online like we're doing now? Absolutely. Where you need an interview as part of your course, then you need to apply in exactly the same way. Fill in your application. If there's an interview that's required, then we, we will follow that through. But at the college, we've got a course for everybody. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you need an interview in order to get a place or be successful in getting a place for us. The important thing is for you to apply. So get your application in now. Some of our courses are filling up really quickly. So I would encourage you to get your application in and then you're in our process, in our system. You'll get notified of what you need to do next some of that may be a direct offer um, some of it might need an interview but as long as you get your application in those next steps will be will be made clear to you that's great thank you Some, somebody's asked a question that they're doing acting how will social distancing work but i know we've, we've again we've touched on that with the social distancing measures um in place um for, for each of the different each of the different courses as well mm -hmm. 
Um, and I think that in in our theatres, for example, uh, we've scoped out how many people, what the capacity is within um, the theatres. So we will we will know how many students we can have in at any one time during their acting course. And then we'll be looking at the controls that are in place around them. Clearly, we also know that the government are, at the moment have not opened theatres. Um, so we'll be working within those government guidelines. But there's no reason why we can't have some some face to face interaction on that course as we would normally. It would just be with controls in place around it. That's great. Thank you. Somebody has asked um, if I don't have a computer, how will I access online classes? You need to let us know um, because we can remove those barriers for you. We've done that a lot since the lockdown period and we've provided devices for a, a number of students who don't have their own equipment. So please let us know. And as part of the enrolment um, process, you'll be asked that question. Do you have a device at home? Do you have access to the Internet at home? So that enables us to put a really bespoke package of support around you to make sure that you can access learning remotely. That's great. Thank you, Rachel. And um, somebody has, has said that they're quite nervous about going to college, but they're going with a friend on the same course. Um, at this stage, do we know whether or not they would be separated or on a staggered timetable? That's a really good question. Um, I think you need to let us know that so that when we're timetable and we can look to accommodate a friendship group, um, because I know that people will be anxious about it. So let us know as part of the application process or the enrolment process. Do let us know about that and we can make sure that message gets through to the curriculum team. I'm sure they'll do their best to accommodate that and it might be that they can do some flexibility when you're actually there. So if you get your timetable and you're disappointed and you're really anxious about it, let us know and it could be that they can flex that and change it so that you get together with your friend. That's great, thank you. Um, somebody else has asked about the practical lessons and they know that they'll have less students per class, um, but will these take place between sort of college hours between sort of nine and um, sort of 3.30 or will they be extended at all? There is the potential that we'll be changing the hours slightly to make sure we can accommodate the, the, um, the spread that we'll need to, to access the college site. And we'll be trying to avoid peak times because the buses are likely to be really busy, peak time public transport. So we'll be doing our best to stagger the timetable so that we're not asking you to travel on a bus at peak time. There may need to be some flex around the timetable and there may need to be some extensions in that timetabled week and even at weekends for some specific courses, but it hopefully it will be limited and we'll let you know when you get your timetable. If you've got any queries about that, then just ask us. That's lovely, thank you. Um, somebody else has um, said, what date is the first day of term going to be? Um, will it be different for different people? Um, I know we've talked about sort of staggered arrival times and things like that. Um, I guess that they'll find that when they get their, um, their timetable through. That's right. We're not planning on changing the, the start date for term. Um, I can't remember. I apologise for that, what the exact date is, um, but it is, it is not the week after the bank holiday, the week after that. Um, so whatever that date is in September, the date is actually on our website so you can look and see what that date is. And that's the start date for 16 to 18 year olds. A week later, adults will start. Um, so we're staggering a little bit the, um, the 16 to 18 year olds who come on site and the adults, but we've always done that. So that's no different to how we've managed it in previous years. That's great. Uh, so we've got just a, a couple more more questions here. So um, I'm not going to college with any of my friends and I'm worried that the social distancing measures that they'll struggle to make new friends. Is there anything in place that will allow um, people to make friends a little bit easier? I think that's a really good question um, and I can understand from my perspective I might be a bit anxious about coming without friends and thinking that you'll have a smaller group to 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 work with um, but we'll re really do our best to introduce you not only to those who will be in your class but those who are also outside of your class and doing it rem remotely and there'll be some lessons where you're all together there might be people who are on site 
people who are learning remotely, but you'll still be in the same group. It's just you're in different places. So so it's not as if you'll never see them. Um, and, I, and I think given the use of technology now and the use of social media, actually we're used to engaging with friends remotely. We're not necessarily always together, are we? So I think it will be a, a hybrid. Um, but let us know if you're worried about it or you're anxious or you feel like you're not making friends. We've got a huge support network at the college and let us know and we can support you in that. But there will be a group that you're with on site um, and there'll be another group that are off site and then they'll mix them up a bit. So it's not necessarily the case that you won't see anybody. There'll be a friendship group there for you, I'm sure. That's lovely. And I've just got one more question actually about um, somebody again who, who's quite nervous about starting. Um, who, would, who would they sort of speak to um, if they wanted to stay with a friend um, and when should they do that? Should they do that at the sort of enrolment enrolment stage? You can ring one of our advisors now. Um, you can make that clear at this point. You can have it added to your application um, and you can also have it raised as part of enrolment. So I would say raise it with anybody that you speak to at any point um, and we'll make sure that we pick it up. I can't guarantee it, as I said before, but we'll do our best to accommodate it. That's great. Thank you so much, Rachel. I think um, I think that that's all of our questions now. Um, but thank you very much. It was a really, really great informative session. Um, and um, just to let everybody know that if you wanted to sort of rewatch this session again, um, this will be um, on our YouTube channel. So you can go back and, and view it if there's any other questions that you've got. Like Rachel said, you know, ask the team, give us a call and we'll, we'll happily put your mind at rest. But thank, thank you very you much, much, Rachel. That was thank great. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, everybody. And uh, just just a, a very quick one, just to um, just to let you know, we've got lots of sessions taking place over the next three weeks. So join as many of those sessions as you can. And um, you head over to tmc.ac.uk forward slash couch to college. Um, an introduction. Um, you, there's lots of there's a timetable there that you can choose from. We've also got our Industry Excellence Academy um, session tomorrow morning. And um, we've got a uh, meet the transition teams and another careers and welfare session later on this week. Um, next week is full sessions full of for our subject areas. So if you can register on, on as many as you like of those if you haven't already. Um, but thanks again to Rachel and I hope you have a lovely evening. Thanks for joining us.